What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the spot where we kick back and react to all kinds of different things. All right, so what we got going on today? We're with Neil deGrasse Tyson with another science video on Star Talk. This one is called How Developments in Nuclear Fusion Change Everything. All right, so we got ourselves a new explainer by Neil. So let's go ahead and check this out and see what he's talking about. Let's go. So this will be a benchmark day. We'll look back on that fondly. So Chuck, what's been bugging you lately? I'll tell you, I don't know if it's bugging me. Maybe I'm happy about it. <laughs> maybe, maybe the entire human race has something to be hopeful about. You know how I feel about climate and the climate crisis. Right. But so they, they, I wake up this morning and it's all about fusion. Fusion everywhere. Everybody's talking about fusion, fusion, fusion. I'm like, whoa, whoa, is this a good thing? Or are they yanking my chain? Are they just making me, what are they doing? Are they, are they doing the Lucy pull the football away from me? Or what are they doing? Oh, oh. What, what is happening? What is happening with this? Oh man, great reference. Great reference. Oh man, if you didn't grow up in that time, you don't even know. Good old Charlie Brown could never kick that damn ball. <laughs> Lucy always did him dirty. Fusion. Oh, okay. So, uh, the highlight is at one of the national laboratories, uh, Lawrence Livermore National Laboratories, where they, they, among all the national labs, are one of their major tasks is as shepherds of our nuclear arsenal. Okay? The nuclear... Oh. Fuel, basically. So right. yeah. radioactive materials that might be used in weapons. And it is funded by the Department of Energy, not the Department of Defense. So that in fact, the total amount of money we spend on defense is not only the DOD's budget, but a, an important fraction of the Department of Energy's budget that involves uh, uh, weaponry, basically. Okay. Right, yeah. So there, they have the world's most powerful laser. And what they uh -huh. do with a bunch of these lasers is they aim them all at a tiny target, and they cause the target to explode. All right, that okay. alone is not... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like America so far. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can we more check? <laughs> Oh, man. It's like fire the laser, make it explode. Yep, that's an American thing. What's new about this? Because we've been blowing exactly. shit up for like forever. So if the target is uniformly heated, you know, mm -hmm. evenly in all directions, and the material is very uniform in all directions, so that would be a spherical shape, then the explosion right. creates an implosion on the other side of that explosion. Right? You can't just have stuff come out unless the Newton's law for every action is an equal and opposite reaction. So reaction. The explosion that comes out creates an explosion that points inward. Huh. And okay. That creates very high pressure and very high temperature. And right. under those conditions, you can take two atoms, light atoms, right. and merge right. them into a heavier atom. Sweet. That takes a lot of high temperature to accomplish. Because right. let's take the lightest atom of them all, which is what? I don't know, maybe hydrogen. Hydrogen, you got it. So hydrogen in its nucleus has one proton. Right. And helium in its nucleus has two protons plus right. two neutrons. So how am I going to create a helium atom from a hydrogen atom? So you got to get a bunch of hydrogen atoms together. All right. Together. Together. Well, here's, the, here's what no one is telling you in the news, but it's obvious when you think about it. What do two protons want to normally do? They're well, both they're, positive charge. They don't. They they like each other, but they don't like each other because they're alike. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, it's like when you it's like when you meet somebody at a cocktail party and they remind you of yourself, and you're just like, I don't like that dude. Like, I don't really like that. I don't want to be over there talking to that dude. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. Come to think of it, does that does that say more about us and how much we don't like ourselves? <laughs> I think deep down, we all just secretly just like dislike ourselves just a little bit. And then we see somebody that reminds us of the parts we don't like. We're just like, ew. <laughs> ew, it's me in this raw form. Ew. <laughs> Chuck is still in That's therapy, people, just so you know. I know, exactly. 
<laughs> so like, yeah, it's a simple question, Chuck. Where, where did cocktail parties and liking people come in? Yeah, but they, they want to get away from each other, right? So these are like charges. They're, so in the case of two protons, they repel each right. other. So right. how do you get them to come together as a new helium nucleus if they want to repel? So this is like oh. ro rolling a ball up a hill, all right? If you don't give right. it enough energy, yeah. it's not going to reach the top. It's not going to reach the top, okay? There you but go. So, if, the, yeah. If you roll it faster and faster, giving it more and more energy, eventually the ball will reach the top and tip and go over and fall on the other side of the hill. That is right. precisely what's going on with two protons. Here it goes. The two protons want to come near each other, but they repel. Let's boost the right. temperature, which speeds everything up. They get closer to each other before right. they repel. Boost the right. temperature some more. They get even, even closer. There is a magic temperature at which these protons will come close enough so that an entire new force operates. It would have to be a strong force in the nucleus to keep two protons together. In fact, mm, the name yes, of that quantum love. <laughs> <laughs> that's called quantum love. Oh, that, where's that disco? So I remember Jungle Love. Remember Jungle Love? We know quantum right. love. All oh, right. Jungle Love. Yeah, quantum love is like quantum you resist love. until you cross over the barrier, and then you're there. So wow. when they cross that barrier, a strong force that operates in the nucleus takes over. It's one of the fundamental forces of nature, and it's called the strong nuclear force. There it is. <laughs> What's it called? You know what? I can appreciate them calling it that, as opposed to looking up some super complicated, like Latin name or something like that, that's got like 30 syllables in it and calling it that, making it almost impossible for any of us to remember. I actually appreciate the fact that they gave it such a simple name. For real. I, I, that, that's me. What do you guys think? Let me know if you guys appreciate that the way I do. <laughs> strong nuclear force there it is <laughs> the strong nuclear force it is a very short range force it right. only operates on scales <clears throat> as small as the nucleus itself wow but you have to get there for it to grab a hold of you and make a new atom that's why gotcha. it takes high density high Height. pressure and high temperature to overcome this. all right so hmm. that now, is I'm, thermo I'm with you, I'm with you. That is thermonuclear fusion. Thermo is hot, fusion. nuclear is the nucleus. Right. Fusion, they're bringing it right. together. It turns okay. out that when you do that, your products right. have less mass than when you started with. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Where did the mass yeah. go? Exactly. E equals MC squared, my, oh, my lovely. So mass the mass energy. on the one side of the equation, if you lose it, right it manifests on the other side of the equation as energy. Got it. There you go. There it is. And so they manage. That's fusion. So at the Lawrence Livermore Laboratories using lasers, and right. by the way, they've led the world in lasers like for decades. In fact, people on the inside call it lasers, lasers, and lasers. Okay, Lawrence <laughs> Livermore National Lab. <laughs> okay. <laughs> lasers, lasers, and lasers. That's funny. lasers, right? Right. So, so anyhow, so they have managed to you can add up how much energy it takes to turn on the lasers and fire them and then look at how mm -hmm. much energy comes out after you've done this and they got 50 percent more energy out of this than the energy of the lasers that went into it that's amazing amazing because, first time that's wow. ever happened now that now that's a, now that's an energy source now because you got more out than you got in which is Correct. what i want to know which is so what what did it take what would it what would it be what did it measure like is it anything significant percentage wise that's great but like what would it take to turn it this into great an if it just broke even that would be a, a major yeah, milestone true. unto itself right but the fact that right. they got 50 percent more energy out than they put in it's it says oh my gosh we can get the physics to succeed <laughs> and right. for my money i'm saying if the physics works then it's just a matter right. of time before engineers say, I got this. I got, right. I got, I'm gonna make you something can... out of that. I, I got exactly. this. And so- That's amazing. 
man, well, that sounds great. The thing that's popping my head is like, okay, we're, we're learning how to take energy and make more energy, different methods. The problem with the Obsidian is the current energy companies and how they don't want that because, you know, they can't squeeze our pockets if we have a higher abundance of energy. So I wonder, I wonder how hard it's going to be for this to actually become ready available for the public. I don't see it happening anytime soon, probably not even in my lifetime. Uh, yeah, and so I'm very much look forward. There's a civilization pivoting on this yeah. result. And by the way, what I just described to you, the sun does every moment of its life. The problem over all these years is that, of course, we've known how to make fusion. We've not, we've right. known how to make fusion since, what, 1949 or something? When it, the first fusion bombs are called hydrogen bombs. <laughs> They're right. using hydrogen. That's what I just told you. We, two protons is merging hydrogen atoms, nuclei together. So we've mm -hmm. known how to make fusion forever. The right. challenge is not how do you make fusion, how do you control it? Yeah, because you don't want the electric company um, having to move to a new city because there's no city left. Oh, right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so while in America, America, we're really good at blowing stuff up, we're less good yeah. at controlling that explosion, <laughs> right? So we blow stuff up, but we haven't figured out how to prevent stuff from blowing up on its own. <laughs> So we're so good in one area, but hitting the reverse on that, not so much. <laughs> so the holy grail was, can we undergo fusion in a controlled way where one day you might be able to throttle it or contain it or transport it? And we'll finally get maybe that ending scene in Back to the Future. Right. Here's your cue, Doc. Marty! It's your kids, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. And do you remember how, uh, you know, and and, and 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 Marty says, but Doc, where are you going to get the energy? There's no Galaxy. lightning bolt and there's no room for, you know, how, what are you going to do? And remember what he does? He dumps a bunch of trash into uh, <laughs> the flux capacitor, which is now powered by fusion. It's, it's Mr. Home Fusion, right? It was like a, like a blender. That's right. The, he puts it yeah. in, and that undergoes nuclear fusion. And so one day, perhaps, we have fusion reactors in every car. And then you could like, wow, there it is. So, so this- And that would be killing two birds at one stone. Now you can use your garbage to fuel your car. Again. Except I don't see the energy companies allowed to happen anytime soon. But imagine having that level of flexibility with your technology. I would love it. I would love it. Wow, so that's transform a... civilization. Even yeah. regardless of the carbon footprint that it doesn't have, it would transform civilization. But it also happens yeah. to not have a carbon footprint. So we could stave off this growth of fossil fuel burning uh, and greenhouse gases and we'll still, we'll still have to recover from the damage we've already done because a right. lot of the carbon dioxide got up, took into the oceans. And if you start removing mm -hmm. it from the atmosphere, it begins to come out of the oceans. And it'll do that until it becomes equal again. So you got to like recover that. But right. it, it, it is right. the future. And just I might tip my hat to the science physicists and engineers at the national labs. It is the future, but my question is how far into the future? I, like I said, I still feel like the people who want to make money off of this is going to make this a, an extremely slow process, slower than it needs to be. And this whole thing was important enough. It was a press conference announced by the Secretary of Energy. So, yeah. oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm chomping at the bit. I, so, for this. I, so then it is good news. Good news. You I, I, suspect it accurately. Yes. All right. And we've been at it for decades. Just thought I'd tell you that. And uh, right so this on. will be a benchmark day. Uh, it was, with the first week and first and second week of December in the year 2022, we'll look back on that. Fondue. Another day in December that will live not in infamy. What is it when it's a good thing? Fem femi. <laughs> Just femi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, never knew that one. That's funny. Femi. Wow, that's going to be in my head for a little while. Okay, we got to end it there. All uh, right. <laughs> All right. But there's way more about like fusion. That's another show. We'll talk about stars. Yeah. There's, there's more that. and why stars explode. All right. I, yeah. I'll, I'll leave a teaser here. You ready? 
Fusion, you get energy by combining little atoms. Fission, mm -hmm. you get energy by splitting big atoms. Okay. But wait a minute. There's got to be some point in the middle where these two phenomena meet. Mm -hmm. What happens then? Therein is the, are the, the, the seeds of the undoing of great massive stars in the universe. That's a whole other explainer oh. we'll get to. Oh, yeah. Nuclear fusion right. in a nutshell. This okay. has been a, yet another Star Talk explainer. Great to have All you right. join us. Uh, putting fusion back on the map. Chuck, always good to have you. Always a pleasure. Neil deGrasse Tyson here. Keep looking up. All right, another great explainer from Neil deGrasse Tyson and great comedy from Chuck Nice. All right, y'all. Y'all know what to do. Go down in the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about this one. Let me know what you'd like to see me react to next. Hit that like button before you go. Share this video with everyone you know. And subscribe if you haven't done so already, all right? So, till next time, take care of yourselves. And I'm out of here.